Okay, so this is the first session. I'm gonna do four weeks, four sessions uh, on the topic of building a listing controlled or a listing based business. Now you're gonna, you're gonna see through the different uh, interactions that we have that I'm gonna toggle a lot. I'll toggle you know, uh, to the, you know, towards the conversation of, hey, let's build a listing based business. Then I'll kind of you know, toggle back to the conversation of let's build a, a, a bigger buyer based business. And then, of course, there's going to be times where I'm going to do, um, you know, have courses or conversations on, you know, what is that perfect blend of, of, you know, building a business that has a perfect blend between buyers and sellers. So I want to start off with saying that, um, and I use this analogy a lot, so forgive me, but I just, it, it, if I keep using the same analogy over and over and over again, a lot of times it'll sink in and people really kind of grasp my perspective. But how you build your business is kind of similar to how you would choose which ice cream that you're going to eat when you go to the ice cream store. You like, there are no bad ways, there's no bad choices. Like whether you're building it based on listings, whether you're building it based on, on buyers, or whether you're building a perfect blend, it's insignificant like to anybody else but yourself. Like, my son wants strawberry, my other son wants cookies and cream or cookie dough, my daughter won't have any ice cream, and my wife wants um, you know, something with coffee in it or, or caramel, and I want mint chip with Rocky Road, so I have to get the double scoop, right? And, and it's interesting, like none of, our, none of my kids want to taste mine, and I don't really ask to taste theirs. Like it's perfectly fine that they chose what they wanted to choose and, and, and enjoy every bit of it. And, and the same thing goes to, to myself. So the fact that we're having a conversation on a listing-based business does not mean that you need to change everything in your world, okay? But what, it, what, what I wanna do is I wanna take the next four weeks and I wanna share with you uh, the process of building a listing-based business. Now through the, the explaining or the sharing of this process, there's some of you are probably gonna say, wow, that's really me, I can do this, I really want to go ahead and move forward with this. Some of you are gonna say, hey, I'm glad I know, that's really not how I wanna build my business or do my business, so then you'll go in a different direction and maybe focus on either centers of influence, uh, you know, which is a blend of both types of businesses. Maybe you'll be more buyer based and only work sellers if they come from past clients, which is a fantastic way of doing business. Um, so those are the outcomes. So the, the, the desired outcome for myself or the intention for myself is to give you exposure and give you the opportunity to walk into the ice cream store and see all these flavors taste every single one of those flavors, and then decide which one you're going to actually commit to. That's it. That's my intention. My intention is not to push you to mint chip. It's not to push you to caramel or strawberry, a sundae, a cake cone. You guys see, I know a lot about ice cream. I, I, I love ice cream, actually. So it's not to push you, though, in any of those directions. It's to expose you to all of the flavors. And the good thing is, is through my coaching experience through the years, whether it be Mike Ferry coaching or whether it be coaching um, of agents within my own operations, I have been able to, to, to talk to and, and be around and, and help agents that had various tastes. Like so many, and no agent really has the same exact taste. And I've been exposed to those and been able to figure out how to help each one of those grow based on what flavors they like. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and go into the conversation. This will be the, the first course. So I'm gonna kind of break it down um, today of the things that you must know. Um, these are things that you have to figure out in the beginning if you're gonna want to build a listing-based business. I also want to, before I start with the first point, I also, also want to, uh, you to understand that, you know, I'll use the term top producer, okay? Now, when I use the term top producer, um, that can mean so many things to so many different people. You know, like if you're, you know, in a company and, uh, and, and you're like the, the number one agent, maybe you're doing 40 deals or 30 deals. That's very common, right? For a company, the number one agent doing 30 deals a year. Um, and they would be called a top producer. 
And then, of course, you, you could take that brand, whatever it is, say Century 21, and then you could look at all around the state and you could say, compare agents based on all Century 21 agents in the state and say, okay, this one's doing 100 deals, that's a top producer. Or you could go a little bit broader and look at the entire country and you'll see there's agents doing 200 deals plus and you could say, okay, that's a top producer. So the definition of top producer is very subjective, but it's also very subjective based on the environment you've been around. Let me share with you the environment that I'm around like every single day. Um, you guys know Brian, is it Brian Prawl? I believe his name is, um, is his last name. I know his first name, but I, and I know his last name, but I hopefully I pronounced it correctly. That's with Palmetto Mortgage that's helping, you know, in partnering with us on Zillow Leads. He came to Myrtle Beach this week and um, he was in my office this morning. And, and I brought him in and I showed him the entire operations and said, hey, here's what we do. And then I walked around and I said, okay, that guy's been in the business for four years and he's doing 150 transactions. That guy over there has been in the business for six, uh, five, five years right now and he's doing 250 transactions. That guy over there has been in the business his third year and, he did a, and he's doing 100 on schedule. He did 115 his second year and he's on track to do around 120 his third year. And then this guy over here is actually just hitting 100 for the first time He's, he's based on his closed and his pending already this year, he's at 100. So we know for the end of the year, he's going to be at 100. So that's the room. That's the life that I live every single day. So my definition of a top producer is 100 plus transactions. Now that doesn't take away anybody that's doing a hundred, uh, less than 100. What it does is it opens up the opportunity for anybody that's doing a less, less than 100 transactions to be exposed to what I'm exposed to. See, if I believe a top producer is 20 transactions, then I'm going to coach people to be top producers, which is 20 transactions. But see, I believe top producers are people that are doing over 100 transactions. And so therefore, my coaching tends to be at a higher level. I coach to a bigger number. Now, what's the whole point? The whole point is when I'm talking to each one of you, I see every one of you's, you being the next top producer. That's what I see. I see everybody because I've taken so many agents from new licensees to 100 transactions that I see everybody's ability to actually reach that level. And typically, it's they haven't been exposed to what they need to be exposed to in order to hit the level. A lot of it has nothing to do with ability. A lot of it has to do with exposure. And so this course is going to, I'm going to just expose you to what it would look like as if you were gonna build a listing-based business and you were going to really take it to another level compared to how most people will actually take their business. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to preface that because I look at all of you as potentially doing tremendous amounts of business. Now, with that being said, I also like to have fun. So I'm not ever going to coach you to sell yourself out, to ruin your families, to not have any fun and take time off in, in lieu of actually uh, trying to do a lot of deals. In other words, I'm going to teach you, here's the techniques and strategies to do top agent like business and actually live a life worth having. That's one with your families or engaging in all the activities that you like to engage in on a personal level, whether it be just hanging out, whether it be traveling or whatever you want to do. So let's get started. The first thing you've got to answer is this question. You've got to answer this. Who will you call? Who will you call? If you're going to be build a listing-based business, there is nobody. Now, mark my word. I don't care what the Facebook ads say. I don't care about the emails that you're getting from our competitors right now because they know that I'm taking over Columbia. Now they're going to start emailing you, and you've already got those emails that are saying, you know, hey, we can provide better sources, resources than, uh, than you're currently getting at, at Vanguard. I don't care what they're saying. I don't care what the computer says when you go into Google and when you see this business plan, it says listing blueprint, how to take 15, you know, uh, listings per month without making calls. If I don't care what they're saying, I don't care who's saying it. 
they will not stand 60 seconds with me in a one-on-one -on -one conversation about whether or not that's the truth or not. I will challenge anybody that says you can get a build a listing based business without making outbound calls. I will challenge anybody. Mike Ferry, he would never say that. Tom Ferry, he would never say that. Brian Buffini, he would never say that. I will challenge anybody in the marketplace to a live Facebook one on one conversation. They will never accept. Now, if you listen to the coaches, the Mike Ferries, the Tom Ferries, the Buffinis, the bigger coaches, they're not saying that. They're not saying you can build a listing based business without making calls. None of them will ever say that. They'll say you can build a business without making calls. Yeah, you, we could go buy more leads, make a lot of buyer sales. They'll never say that you can build a listing based business without making calls. Now, it'll be the third tier, the low tier coaches, the coaches like that didn't quite make it as a top producer in the business. So they actually started becoming the teacher of the business. Maybe they did 20 deals. Now all of a sudden they wrote this book that somebody else ghostwrited them and said, here's how you do for sub owners without making a call. And then that book launches them into a coaching career. And then they go and charge you $99 a month. They don't give you any value. And then next year they're out of business, but then they pop up coaching something totally different because they're just looking for another group of suffers that'll actually pay them. And they just reinvent the conversation over and over again because they're just trying to take your money. The top tier coaches never say you can build a listing based business without making calls. It's the newer coaches that are just trying to take your money and flash a shiny object in your face to get you to chomp on it. Those are the ones that are going to try to convince you. Now, that being said, if you believe me, because you have a choice to believe what I just said, or you can choose to reject what I just said, but let's just assume for a moment that I, I, I've got a little bit of experience in this area. Let's assume for a moment that that was the truth, okay? You have to decide who you're gonna call. You're gonna build a listing-based business. You'll have to make some outbound calls. So who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be four Saba owners? Are you gonna door knock? That, by the way, is an outbound call. I guess it's not a call, but it, it qualifies as an, an outbound lead generation strategy. You're gonna door knock. I know there's some of you that have been doing some door knocking. Fantastic that you're doing that. And I know some of you have gotten leads from it. So is it gonna be four Saba owners? Is it going to be door knocking? Is it going to be expireds? Is it going to be old expireds? Is it going to be, um, you know, uh, leads that's generated from those little home valuation landing pages, those widgets, what's my home worth, those kind of leads? Are you going to make cold calls, like just sold calls or just listed calls? Are you going to call rent bows? One of the most untapped sources of listing leads is for rent by owners. I'll tell you why. For rent by owners have a pain. It's called a vacancy which leads to negative cash flow, which is no return or negative return. If somebody has a vacancy for two to three months in a row, that probably takes their entire calendar year and makes it a negative cash flow on an annualized basis. Most rental properties do not cash flow over two months worth of rent in a year. Now, some of it could say, well, Greg, well, what if they own it, for, if they own it with no mortgage? <laughs> I'm an investor. Smart investors calculate opportunity costs. Just because you don't have a, you're not paying a bank to borrow their money, you're losing opportunities in other areas that you could have your money invested in. That's the cost of money. The cost of money in a cash position is the opportunity cost of money. And so when you look at the opportunity where you could reposition your cash and what the overall annualized return is from rental property, they're not cash flowing more than two months a year. So when you get a for rent by owner who's been, uh, you know, that's got a vacancy, if they get into the two month vacancy, they're already feeding the monster. They're having to feed that investment to keep it afloat. So when there's a pain like that, that's when people start thinking about selling their investments. And when you start talking to for rent by owners, a lot of times they have multiple properties. So you can talk to one that there's a vacancy and they may say to you, no, we're keeping this one, but I do have another one that, you know, that I'm thinking about, um, that I'm thinking about selling. 
And then if on that phone call they say to you, Greg, I'm not selling any of my investments, then I can easily say, well, fantastic. Hey, look, I make calls like this quite often. So I come up with opportunities for my investor buyers. So I'm, you know, I'm, tell me a little bit more about what you like to buy. When I find a property that fits what you like, then are you interested in purchasing more? You see, if they're not selling their investments and they're adamant about keeping them, usually they're accumulating more assets means they're a great buyer. And if they're not accumulating more assets, then I start to question, well, then why are you continuing to hold the assets you have? If you're not a strong, if you're not believing, if your financials are not strong enough on, if, or if they, these investments are not performing at a good enough rate for you to buy more, then why are you even keeping these? Now, that's not what I say to them. That's what's going on in my mind, which triggers me to ask better questions and identify leads. See, any of these sources, whether you're door knocking through a farm, a, a, a community expired, old expired, FISBOs just listed, just sold, all of those can, are sources that you can build a really big business off of. I'm going to ask you to listen to, um, this week, a podcast that I did with three young guys, and I'm going to say kids. I guess I can say kids. I know that I wouldn't offend them. Um, if I said that, because I do have a child that's older than all three of them. They're 24 or 24, 21, and 20. These are three agents that are in my office in Myrtle Beach right now. Those three agents did nothing but call just solds for their six, first six months. Nothing but cold call. No FISBOs, no expires, nothing but cold call. And they have 20 or more active listings in their business, in their inventory right now as we speak. See, cold calling, I know statistically, depending on, 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 on one's, uh, how they, you know, if they're going all in on listings, cold calling could represent about 24% of all the listings you take. That's a huge chunk of business. So any of these, and I'm not saying you need to be a cold caller. You may need to be a, somebody's focusing on FISBOs or expires. You can choose. Those are flavors once again. Okay, you can choose what to do, but you just have to understand that I don't know one person across the country that's building a listing-based business where they're getting 10 listings or more per month that's not making calls. Or if there is, I bet you it's billboard and radio advertisement. And by the time that they look at their expenses going out and what their net profit is, it's all ego-based business. Meaning like they want to, everyone to see that they're doing 200 deals, but them and their accountant is trying to figure out how to pay their estimated taxes because they're blowing all their money in advertising and there's not much left over. And unfortunately, I have friends, I know people that, that that's their model, but they need to be in the limelight saying, hey, I do all these deals, but the reality is, is that they're not really making much profit. So number one, who will you call? The second question is this, when will you call? See, identifying who you're going to call, identifying the source that you're going to work to generate seller and listing opportunities is critical. But once you know that source, you know, you've got to figure out, okay, well, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do with this source? So you've got to answer the question, when will you call? What will be your daily routine? I may, I, I, I don't know if it's, I got a really good workout today, so I've got a lot of energy. Okay. I mean, I did, I'd like, I did a double orange theory workout. I did two classes back to back today. So I'm pumped up. Okay, so you might hear that coming across, you know, in my, in my tonality and inflection today. Um, and it makes me feel like making these types of statements. Just like I don't think you can find somebody that's going to tell you that they build a top producing business listing focused only by not making calls. You're not going to find any if, if very few that are going to tell you they built one without actually making those calls between eight and 11 in the morning. It's just the way it's going to, there, there's a few truths about this business. All of the listing agents that are doing big business are generating through outbound means and they're doing it in the morning. If you take in Myrtle Beach, and I can say this safely, and you take the top five real estate agents in Myrtle Beach based on number of transactions, 
the top five, four of them are in my office and one of them is, was in my office for 12 years. Five of the five, all doing well over 100 deals. None of them were licensed before I met them. That's our market stat. And none of them, every, what time is it? 11.23, they've already stopped for the day. But at 11 o'clock, at eight to 11 this morning, I guarantee I know exactly what all five of them were doing. And we can go across the country and find out that a lot of the top agents, they're doing the same thing. They're focusing on, I'm going to call this type of person and I'm going to do it at this time for this amount of many hours. Whether it be one hour, two hour, three hour, it's all your flavors. I'm just exposing you to what it looks like to truly, I, I, this is real transparency where I'm letting you look under the hood of what um, top producers are really doing. This is not the shiny, actually, this is the dull object, right? Like this, the reason why no one talks about this all over the uh, Facebook and all over the coaching programs is because nobody will sign up. I mean, I've just kind of like, it's almost like I'm talking you out of doing it. Well, I mean, I got to call people. I got to figure out who I'm going to call and I got to call them. And then I got to do it for multiple hours and I got to do it every day and I got to do it in the morning. Yeah, it's the dull object. See, the dull object doesn't sell. Only the shiny object sells. So if you want to sell stuff to agents, just sell stuff for the sake of making money, then you got to sell the shiny stuff. But if you really have a genuine passion for helping agents develop wonderful careers that are profitable, that allows them the freedom of time to spend with their families, have retirement, really be able to turn the lights off and have money for retirement, then you have to convince people to do the boring, dull type of activities. The guys that chase the shiny objects, they typically don't have long lifespans. My commitment is to develop agents that can retire because of what we built together. That's like, that's fun for me. So who will you call? Or I'm sorry, when will you call? You got to have a daily routine. Will you start at 8 a.m.? Now, some of you could say to me, I have to take my kids to school. I can't be at there at eight. Then you need to take your kids to school. So when I say eight o'clock, it's really kind of like, um, don't take it too literal. It's <clears throat> based on your family, personal, and, and personal obligations. It's got to be the first thing you do in the morning. So if, you, if somebody has to take children to school and they can't get to the office until 8.45, then I, didn't, I don't mean 8, I mean 8.45 for them. If it's 9.15, I mean 9.15 for them. It's, you've got to figure out who you're going to call, but then you got to figure out when you're going to call and the top agents get it done first because there's too many distractions throughout the rest of the day. There's too many fires to put out throughout the rest of the day. There's too much temptation throughout the rest of the day. And so what ends up happening is we know that if you will set prospecting, lead generation in your morning schedule, the probability of you fulfilling that and following through is much higher than if it's in the afternoons, just because of the distractions, the fires, the temptations. And so we've got to, we've got to protect ourselves from being distracted, from being taken off of our course. What's interesting is we will actually be more than willing to be distracted and put out someone else's fire. We will, we will not generate business today and we'll go over here and put out somebody else's fire. But if we're Every single day, if we're putting out everybody else's fire, guess what happens? We start our own fire. Our own financials blow up. We have our own stresses. Like when we focus on everyone else and don't actually invest in ourselves inside of this business, eventually we have our own challenges. We don't have the cash flow. We're not reaching the goals. We're not buying the amount of real estate we want to buy. We're not putting our kids in that school that we want to put them in. Or we're not being able to pay our home off. Whatever those things are, like when you don't invest in yourself, then it ends up bubbling up as a problem later on. When will you call? To build a listing-based business, it has to be in the morning. If it's not in the morning, there won't be consistency. And this is kind of like in, your, in a car, you have to put it on cruise control every day, same speed, same time, every day, same speed. Tomorrow, same speed, same time. 
the next day, same speed, same time. If you don't put it on cruise control, you're doing mm, 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 mm. That's what your income is going to look like. And most people don't want that roller coaster trajectory when it comes to their income. Next thing you've got to answer yourself. So who will you call? When will you call? The next one is this. How many will you call? So you've got to put a time on it, like when you will call, because then you can hold yourself accountable to that commitment that you make. But then inside of when you're calling, when you're standing there or sitting there or you're wherever you are about ready to make these calls, you then have to say to yourself, you have to make a commitment to yourself as to how many calls you will make. Because if you don't, then you won't be as efficient at it. Like if you just go in and say, okay, I'm gonna prospect for three hours, you may prospect for three hours or two hours and, and, and make only five calls or five contacts in that period of time versus somebody else says, okay, I'm gonna do it for three hours and I'm gonna to talk to 25 people. Like that 25, when you have a goal of say 25 people, when you determine what that is, and you can tell in your first 30 minutes, gosh, I'm not really like, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna hit my 25, then you start dialing faster, you start asking questions differently, you start making sure that you're more organized the next day, because you, got, you start self-adjusting in order to maneuver yourself and put yourself in a position to reach those goals. You start self-correcting yourself. But if you have nothing to hold you accountable, if you don't have a specific number, then there's nothing to adjust to. Then it's like you settle. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, today just no one answered. Yeah, today it's just, you know, gosh, got a lot of bad numbers. Well, today, every, no one just, everyone said no. It's like, you know, it, it, and we accept it as if the world is just controlling exactly what happens. Like, it's just this, could, like, whatever's coming our way is just what's coming our way. And we have no way to make any adjustments to improve it or increase it. But when you declare, I'm going to do it for two hours and I'm going to make 20 contacts in that two hours, as, you're, as, as life is coming your way, you're looking at it and making adjustments and saying, hey, maybe I should do this to pick up the pace. And now all of a sudden, you start more consistently hitting your numbers. It's all about habits. All about habits. The next one here. This is number four. What do you need to learn to make calls? You got who will you call? When will you call? How many will you call? What do you need to learn to make the calls? Because let's face it, most people who don't make calls suffer from a lack of confidence in what to say when they actually are making calls. And look, I, I have to say that in the beginning, I probably came, you know, had some of the same challenges. You know, oh gosh, I don't want to sound stupid. Well, then practice. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, well then practice. Well, I, I mean, what if they say this? Well, practice and the answers to what if they say that. Like every bit of fear that people have in making the calls can be countered, can be lessened, can be decreased through practicing. You know, if, if, if my child gets up to the basketball, you know, free throw line and says, I, I, I can't make it, I can't make it. Well, they're right. And then there's another child around the other court says, I can make it, I can, and he's missing every damn time. He said, well, I can make it. You ever seen those kids? I can make it. And then he like airballs it. I can hit it and he misses. But it's interesting. The kid that walks up with confidence, but keeps practicing becomes a master. And the kid who walks up there lacking confidence tends to not practice and never masters it and typically quits. We can learn a lot through our observations of young children. The only difference between young children and the way they learn and the way we learn as and the way we learn as adults is that they don't know they look stupid. But we as adults know that we look stupid and we don't like to look stupid. It's embarrassing. The kids they're naive. They don't even know anybody's looking. They don't think anybody's judging. But the adults, you know, we're supposed to have it all together. So, you know, we got to look like we know what we're doing. Let's not make sure no one realizes that we don't know what we're doing. So what we'll do is just say, I'm not going to make those calls. We will say, I'm not going to make those calls because um, uh, it's just not like, I just don't want to do that. It's just not me. No, no, that's a, 
I don't want to make those calls because I am going to look like a complete disaster when I first make those calls. No different than that child that's sitting there saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. We're doing the same thing as adults. You have to figure out though, in order to turn this around and build a listing based business, you have to have confidence. I talk about confidence a lot in the conversations that I have with, with, with agents. You have to figure out what do you need to learn to make the calls? What scripts do you need to learn? If you're gonna call rent bows, then we need to be role playing like all the different scenarios that you could have with a rent bow. If you want to do for sale by owners, then you've got to learn the for sale by owner scripts. You got to understand um, what to say when they say, I don't wanna pay a commission or I only wanna play blank percent. You've got to understand what to say back. See, you know in baseball that you, you see we're playing this one team and we scouted the pitcher and the pitcher's best pitch is a fastball. He also has a slider and he also, you know, um, you know throws a curveball. But majority of the time he throws a fastball. So when we know that, then before we get in the game and have to face this batter, we can go ahead and practice taking the fastball, practice taking the curveball, the slider, practice those things. So when we're in the game, we've already seen the ball multiple times. So it's not new to us. It doesn't freak us out. We can walk in with confidence. Like, I hope he throws me his best fastball because I've been practicing this, hitting this fastball for the last three weeks. I'm waiting on his, like, hey, pitcher, throw me the fastball. Don't tell me when, but just make sure you throw one during this series because I'm waiting for it. Like, what if you walked up like that? Like, you just call him out. Hey, hey, Mr. Seller, you know what? Uh, most for sale by owners want to talk about commission because one of the reasons they're selling on their own is they're hoping to avoid the commission. So why don't we just go ahead and have an open dialogue about that now? Like, like what if you went to a for sale by owner and that was your approach instead of like, I hope they don't ask me the commission. I hope they don't talk about commission. I hope they don't talk about commission. They're going to talk about commission. So wouldn't it be more powerful if we were the ones initiating the conversation? Because see, then we can control the narrative. That'll catch them off guard. Instead of being the agent that's being caught off guard, we can catch them off guard. They would be so impressed with you. So they, they, would, they would want you so bad because you actually, with confidence, was willing to have just a business person to business person conversation. See, that would be confidence. And confidence comes from practice. What scripts do you need to know? depending on who you're going to be calling, should dictate what scripts you need to practice more. Always practice all the objection handlers, but if you're gonna focus on building a listing based business on one area, let's just say expired, then fa focus most of your time on the expired script and all the objection handlers. So it's whatever source or category, pillar of, 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 of leads, plus the objection handlers is what you need to practice. And I suggest that you role play with each other. You record yourself reciting the scripts. Record, like on your phone, just hit a record button and say all the scripts in your phone and record it. And then listen to it. And I prefer you plug it into your car. If you have one of those, plug it into your car and listen to it in your car. Now, here's why I'm saying this. What's that guy, Bruno Mars? And has anybody ever heard of Bruno Mars? Just for you in Columbia, can y'all raise your hand if you've heard? Okay, all right, now you've all heard of him. Now, how many of you, if the Bruno Mars song came on, you could actually sing some of the song right now? Please raise your hand. Steve, I know you can, man, raise your hand. All right, now those of you that rose your hand and can sing, um, and can sing some of Bruno Mars, how many of you, actually printed out the, the, the script, his lyrics, and read it and memorized it, and that's why you can actually sing it. Now raise your hand. Wait, you guys know who Bruno Mars is. You can sing some of his songs, and you didn't practice the scripts. How the hell did y'all memorize it? You listen to it over and over again on the radio, or in your iTunes account, or Amazon Music. You, you didn't even think to memorize it. It just occurred. 
See, if you record the scripts in your own voice, in your phone, and you play it in the car, and you play that over and over again, like if you've got children, your children need to know the scripts. See, if your children know the scripts, then I know that you're practicing the scripts because you practice in the car. You listen to the recording. And then what will happen is you'll be listening and you're learning. And then as you're li listening and you're learning, just like the Bruno Mars song, you accidentally, you started to memorize it. Well, then guess what you did? Or guess what you need to do now? Go record it again. Go record it in three more days. And then start playing that one for two more days. Here's what's going to happen again. You're going to be listening to it more often. You'll learn it even better, memorize it even more. But you'll start to like the fact that you sound a little bit better. Now, how do you sound a little bit better? Because you've actually started to memorize it. So it doesn't sound like you're reading it as much. Then repeat it a third time and repeat it a fourth time. All of a sudden, now you're adding all kinds of little twists to it. You're like recording and then you're adding a few words here and there. And then you listen to yourself. Now you don't even sound canned anymore. It's just like the first time you saw Bruno or, or listened to Bruno Mars. Most of us couldn't sing the songs the first time, but we started tapping at the beat. And then the next time we started tapping our foot, you know, like this. And then we started moving our head. And we're like looking around the uh, other people in the car. We're started, you know, all of a sudden it's like, what the hell's taking over my body? Like, I don't, I just heard the song one time. I started tapping my foot. I hear it two, two times. I start moving my head with it, start hearing it for the third time. And I'm like, start saying some of the words. You know, how you say like, you only know like two words. So you always say it at the perfect time when he says it. And that's the only two words, you know, still, I haven't been actually studying this, his scripts. I've just been exposed to it. Next thing you know, you know the whole darn song and you're singing it with your daughter like I am on the way to tennis tournaments. Never studied it, just been exposed to it. That's what we call script mastery. Script mastery is so simple. You just have to be immersed in the conversations. So what do you need to learn to make the calls? What script do you need to learn? Practice what I just said. Role play with another agent. Record yourself, listen to it, re-record, listen to it, re-record, listen to it, re-record, listen to it. You've now gained your confidence and you walk in and you're bringing up the conversations that you know they're going to bring up, but you're doing it on your terms. And now all of a sudden they say, wow, you seem different than everyone else we've talked to. And guess who they hire? Different. The next thing here, what do you do when you get a no? See, I'm just laying the, the, the groundwork right here. I'll get a little bit more technical in the, in, in, in future, um, um, in the future uh, webinars in the next couple of weeks. This is just groundwork. So what do you do when you get a no? You either handle the objection, if it's an objection, or you get their email. I, there, there's a recording on, uh, out there, probably on YouTube. It's how to monetize the no. It's such, boy, I mean, there's thousands of views on that one. And, and it is such a real, and I'm, I'm patting myself on the back and I don't mean to do that, but I, I, I will still do it because that is such an important recording for you to hear. Because people were like, Greg, you mean you're going to call for three hours? You're only going to get one lead? And I'm like, well, no, I'm going to call for three hours and I'm going to make, say, 40 contacts and I'm going to get 39 opportunities for my database and through the 39 opportunities to build my database i'm actually going to get one lead too but the 39 people if i got 15 of them in my database then those 15 people over the next three years if i nurtured them properly could amount to the to being more worth more than the one lead i got the no's make you more money than the yeses as long as you preserve them in your database what do you do when you get a no? You go for the email. And I said the script, the script, I, I think Gary has the script because um, I think he passed it out to some people sometime, but it can go something like this. You know, they tell me, no, I'm not, no, you know, we're not going to do anything. And maybe I have some more dialogue. They convince me they're really a no. And I would just say, hey, Mike, you know, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. As a matter of fact, you probably don't even know that a lot of your neighbors have requested that I keep them up to date as to what's going on in the community. 
I mean, we both know that the slightest shift in the economy can have a major impact on the price of your property. What's the best email? I'll make sure you're getting the same information. And they just, boom, they cough up that information. Now there's some psychology behind that script as to why it works so well. I won't go deep into that, but trust me, that's the script that we've used to build databases. We've got, you know, databases that have 70,000 people of them that are documented property owners. That's significant. And now that I've introduced tools like HomeBot to you all, I mean, this is significant because what you can do is you can put them into HomeBot and they start getting this HomeBot digest every single month. And then you're just delivering so much value to them that you become the authority in their eyes, the household name. This is how you build a listing-based business. You have to figure out who you're going to call, when you're going to call, how many people you're going to call, what you need to know, what's the dialogue you need to learn, and what to do with a no. I really believe, with all my years of experience of coaching agents, I just laid out the basic foundation of building a listing-based business. Now, we have to go in and build the walls. We have to put some trim on the walls. We have to decide what color we're gonna paint the walls. And are, is it gonna be brick or is it gonna be stucco? Is it gonna be vinyl? Is it gonna be rock? There's a lot of other things that we have to discuss to build that listing-based business. But the most important thing you, for you to know is what the foundation looks like. This is the foundation. I pretty much could cover for the next a couple of weeks, I could just now break down and get more granule inside of each one of these little topics. So I've got a homework assignment to you and it's 1147. We're gonna be off here in just a minute, um, but I've got a homework assignment, assignment to you. Um, probably either right now or within the next hour, because they've already been instructed. I've, I did a, a podcast of a, of a recording with three young agents that I mentioned. Um, there are three agents, 20, 21, and 24. It's Anthony, Hunter, and Thomas. These guys are brand new licensees. Um, uh, well, they were, um, you know, uh, about two years ago or say, you know, within the last two years, I should say. And these guys, I'm helping them build a listing based business. They're not working any buyers. They just, for some reason, they chose that they wanted to build their business at such a young age. You know, the, you, you ask, well, how the heck would they have even known? They watched so many YouTube videos and, and podcasts that I had done prior to them coming to the company, and they decided that's what they wanted to do. And I am there with my partner, Brendan, and we're interviewing those three guys on video, or I think you're gonna get the audio version. We've entered those, uh, interviewed them on my podcast and just talked to them about how they're doing it. And these guys now at this age, they've got goals of 10 plus listings per month. Uh, which is great. I mean, there's other agents I know in the, in the office that are doing 20 plus, but this new to the business, 10 plus listings per month, they're able to take nights off and do whatever they want to do. As young, young men, they're able to actually enjoy a life, make some good money, but more important, they're building a heck of a business for themselves. That's gonna lead them to great things. And I just want you to hear the answers that they're giving to the questions and their perspectives, because um, it just fits right in with today's call and it'll fit right in with what we're gonna talk about over the next three calls. So I appreciate your, your, your take of the time. I invite you to text me or email me, um, call me if you have any questions regarding anything that we discussed today. Um, and, I, and I urge you to stick with this, attend all four weeks of this, because I think at the end of this course, it can make a very big difference to you and your business, whether or not you decide that you're going to build your business like this, you just take a few nuggets from it and apply it to whatever you're doing. Or if you say, hey, you know what, that's just not what I want to do. And we turn our focus onto something that you might enjoy uh, much better. Whatever the outcome is, I'm not attached. My job is to help you get to where you want to get, not get to where I want you to get. I need to know where you wanna go and my job's to help you get there. I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.